Good morning students. After learning the basics of genetics, let us move on to the topic. Father Grigor Johann Mendel's contribution in genetics. By profession, he was a priest. Grigor Johann Mendel, born in 1822. He was educated in a monastery and uh, went for study of science and mathematics at the University of Vienna. But he could not qualify in the examinations. But his thirst for knowledge could not be suppressed by his failure. Great scientist, Father Johann Mendel, he got the honor, father of genetics. He is known as father of genetics. What is genetics? Study of heredity and variations. Or in short, we can say study of genes. Father Mendel wrote a book, The Laws of Inheritance, that is considered as the foundation of genetics. After publishing the book, not got the recognition, but later on, scientists proved Mendel was correct. Even though there were many limitations, but he was the first scientist who laid the foundation of genetics. Let me explain some terms like alleles in the language of Mendel factors. Today we use the term alleles but Mendel used factors or determiners. What is an allele or a factor according to Mendel? We have already seen uh, in the chromosomes, chromosomes work in pairs. So, a paternal chromosome and a maternal chromosome, they work in pair. These functional segments are known as genes or factors, exactly speaking. A gene has two versions. One is the paternal version and the other is the maternal version. We have already seen it in DNA replication topic. I explained all these things. For a trait or a character, a pair of alleles needed. That is, one gene has two versions or two alleles. One is present in the paternal strand of DNA and the other is present in the maternal strand of the DNA. So here this is suppose this is the paternal strand and this is the maternal strand. So this is the paternal allele and this is the maternal allele for a character or a trait. From this what do you understand? To design a trait how many alleles needed? Two alleles needed. That is a pair of alleles needed. Understood? A pair of alleles or two alleles. One is the paternal version, other is the maternal version. They work together as a pair for expressing a character or a trait. According to Father Mendel, he used the term factors. Now we call it alleles. So whenever you explain uh, Mendel's experiment, you have to use the term factor instead of allele. Now you understand what is an allele. Let me tell you for example, here Mendel represented the alleles using the English alphabets. For example, I have marked here this paternal version of allele for a character height. Suppose we are taking a trait or a character height of an organism. Say it's a plant. A plant's height is taken as a trait or a character. So for the trait height, two versions of alleles needed. 
one is the paternal version other is the maternal version mendel used english alphabet to represent that for example uh, tall tall plant so capital t and ca another capital t so capital t is one allele he used the word factor so capital t is one factor another uh, maternal version is represented by another capital t so capital t capital t these are the two factors which are responsible for expressing a character tall plant thus we are able to understand one gene has two alleles paternal one and maternal one thus a pair of alleles or factors needed to bring a character or a trait now look at the two terms i used here phenotype and genotype you have to understand these two terms before we start mendel's experiment for a trait or a character the visible form or the expressive form of a trait or a character is known as phenotype the physical appearance of a character or we can say the visible character whereas genotype is the genetic expression that is how the alleles are or the factors are present to bring the expression of a character or in short you can say the genetic expression using english alphabets mendel used english alphabets to express the uh, genetic factors that is the alleles and phenotype means the visible character or the physical appearance of a trait or a character for example let us talk about the character or trait height of a plant or height of any organism what are the two possible uh, visible forms of height let us go for tall and dwarf right or tall or short tall plant short plant or dwarf plant whenever we talk about a mendel's experiment we will never discuss an average height he has not that is one of the drawbacks of uh, mendel's experiment so you have to say two contrast characters tall dwarf these are the two visible forms of a character height isn't it so tall if you say tall plant that is known as phenotype and about which trait that term is used about the height about the trait height dwarf is another phenotype of the trait height isn't it suppose the color of our seed pea seeds generally green you have seen isn't it so if you are saying green pods green is the color which is expressed as green color that is known as a phenotype so when you say green that is a phenotype but when you say color of a seed that is called a trait yellow colored seed so that is also known as phenotype but when we talk about color only that's a trait so two contrast characters about the trait color another one shape suppose shape of a seed a round round seed so round is the phenotype we are talking about which character shape of a seed isn't it wrinkled suppose the seed has wrinkles it is not a smooth round so round and wrinkled are the two phenotypes two contrast phenotypes of the trait shape now what the position suppose you might have seen some uh, flower buds born on the extreme tip of a plant extreme tip suppose this is a plant and here on the extreme tip f the uh, bud is formed and the flower is formed you can say this is a terminal bud terminal bud extreme tip of the plant whereas this is a leaf and in this axis that is the angle formed by the leaf and the stem 
here the bud forms you call it an axial bud so we are talking about terminal bud and axial bud about the position of the flower bud isn't it so axial bud and terminal bud these are the two phenotypes of the trait position of the flower bud in a plant so the phenotype is clear children let us move on to genotype what is a genotype genetic expression using english alphabets this is what mendel did isn't it let us talk about the first one uh, the phenotype tall to express tall he used english alphabet capital t capital t or it can be capital t small t so i will explain what is the difference between these two after this topic another one color suppose uh, we are talking about a phenotype green so what way it will be green green can be represented as in this way only i am saying capital g capital g or it can be capital g small g right the shape round it will be capital r capital r or capital r small r you see the same alphabet is used in the short i mean small letter form also same alphabet uh, so what are these t or g and r t is representing the one t here is representing the paternal version of the gene and another t is the maternal version of a trait so the a gene has two versions paternal version maternal version both the versions are represented by english alphabet so this kind of expression is known as genotype remember everywhere for a character we are using a pair of factors what do you call these factors each one is the factor but now we use the term allele capital t is one allele small no, capital t here small t is another allele so either it can be both capital t or capital t small t and what is the meaning of this we are going to discuss now for the time being you just understand genotype is the genetic expression using english alphabets for example for phenotype tall it can be represented as capital t capital t or capital t small t likewise the rest also so let us talk about what are these different forms of genotype next genotype can be of two types it can be homozygous or heterozygous homozygous version of genotype means both the factors are same that is the maternal version and the paternal version will be same both capital or both small letter that is homozygous version for example suppose uh, the phenotype is tall it can be represented in the homozygous version capital t capital t and if a plant is short it will be small t small t like that there is another version heterozygous version of the genotype or heterozygous alleles or homozygous alleles now we are using the term like that but mendel used uh, homozygous factors and heterozygous factors not alleles heterozygous version here in the alleles paternal version and maternal version suppose capital t is the allele paternal version and small t is the maternal version so this way also pairing is possible then you call it heterozygous version so what is the meaning of capital t and small t here this is explained by the term dominant factor and recessive factor after learning phenotype and genotype let us move on to another uh, two terms dominant and recessive what is the meaning of dominant allele or dominant factor dominant factor means a factor or allele 
which is sufficient enough to bring the expression of a character if dominant allele is present it has two options either it can make a pair with another dominant allele or factor or it can make pair with a recessive factor what is the meaning of dominant factor expressive factor is known as dominant factor that is uh, an allele which can bring the character in an organism which can express the character in an organism for example suppose um, the allele capital t is present we are representing the dominant allele or factor using english alphabet capital letters only always remember dominant factor is always represented by capital letters of english alphabets since we are talking about phenotype tall capital t capital t that is paternal version of the factor is also dominant maternal version also dominant this shows that the organism is 100% tall and that organism has no contribution of a recessive gene or a recessive allele to the next generation even that is a pure line breed according to mendel you can say like that now let us move on to the another version of homozygous that is both the alleles are recessive what is the term used recessive recessive means the alleles are present but they can't bring the expression even though the gene version is present but they can't bring the expression in that organism for example small t small t paternal version is also small t that is the gene version which uh, an organism is getting from the father is also recessive and the maternal version from the mother also recessive then that gene um, that is the maternal version and the paternal versions of the alleles for the gene one gene for one character isn't it so both are recessive so that character will not be expressed for example here we are talking about the phenotype a uh, height isn't it so height tall tallness cannot be expressed even though the versions are there but they are recessive they can't bring the expression but in this case you see heterozygous version capital t small t how many dominant version there there is only one but it can make pair with a recessive one still that is capable of bringing the character it can express the character in an organism for example suppose the um, father is contributing capital t capital t means one form of gene paternal version of the gene that is the factor paternal factor capital t and the maternal factor is small t but still the organism will be tall because one dominant allele or factor is capable enough to bring a character to express a character in an organism but only thing is the alleles always work in pair factors always work in pair for a character or a trait Uh, one pair of alleles or factors are needed then only they work as a full set so heterozygous alleles or heterozygous factors mendel used the term hybrid for such heterozygous version hybrid is formed by a dominant allele and a recessive allele but still even though one dominant factor is there still it it is sufficient to bring the character as both the alleles are recessive then that uh, phenotype will be for example tallness uh, the phenotype will be short if small t small t present if they make the pair maternal and paternal both are small t small t contributed by the parents then the organism will be short and if both are contributing dominant gene for a character for example capital t dominant uh, 
allele or the factor from the father and dominant from the mother then the organism will be purely tall that is they are tall that organism itself is tall and that organism will play the role of a contributor of a, a dominant allele only according to mendel but now a science is so advanced uh, there is, there are many expansions of this theory according to mendel he is calling it a, it a pure line that is the homozygous version so homozygous version of genotype can be both dominant or both recessive one dominant gene or one dominant allele or factor itself is enough to bring a character by making a pair with a recessive one in that case it is known as heterozygous so this is clear to you children so the genotype can be expressed in two ways homozygous version or heterozygous version if both the alleles are dominant or if both the alleles are recessive then it comes under homozygous and if one of the pair is dominant and the other is recessive then it is known as heterozygous alleles in the language of mendel heterozygous factors and homozygous factors dominant means an allele which is expressive whereas recessive means which is not expressive even though that version is present but not expressive but if one dominant is making a pair with a recessive one that is sufficient enough to bring the character that is where the heterozygous version is working so i think the terms phenotype genotype homozygous heterozygous dominant recessive all these terms are clear to you you go through this topic and try to understand with examples next class we will study about experiments of mendel thank you